Hello and welcome to the podcast, Gussie, and a simple question. When you put the rubber cement in the same drawer as you keep the KY jelly, what the hell were you thinking? I'm your host, Dave Bledsoe. A few of my friends have been asking, hey, are you going to have like guests on this thing? To which I reply, we tried it already and it just didn't go well. This is the most unprofessional set I have ever been on. This is horse shit. I've got these fucking zombies over here that I have to look at. I have a bunch of pussies staring at me and this fucking baby. This is garbage. This is the Friday, April 17th, 2015 edition. To this week, we're talking about the unbreakable Hillary C., what Uncle Joe Biden is doing, and really, is Ted Cruz actually Littlefinger from Game of Thrones and some sort of viral marketing scheme? Hang on, we're going to find that out. Stay tuned. So, last week, the once and future Clinton came up and dropped some truth bombs on us all. She emerged from some sort of underground vault where she must have been secluded for, I don't know, days. And she said, now sit down here because I I don't want this shocking news to like knock you over. She said, she's running for president. I know. Who knew? I said to myself, you know what? Females are strong as hell. And can I just say right here at the top, And I'm probably going to catch hell for this whole thing. I can see it coming. People are going to paste me because they're going to say I'm a misogynist, which just isn't fair because I'm applying the same critique to Hillary as I would any other politician in similar circumstances. Trust me, Jeb Bush, you're going to get yours. Also, when she wins, and this is a question that's already starting to bother me, are we allowed to just call her Clinton the way we say, like, Obama or Bush or Reagan? I mean, Bush was Bush, even though he wasn't the OB Bush. I mean, we did a little W thing right there at the first, but by the end of his tenure, you just said, ah, fucking Bush, and everybody knew who you meant. I think Hillary's earned the right to be last named on her own merits. You know you've made it as a woman when people just angrily shout your last name when they hate you. Now, this totally unexpected news elicited the predictable reactions across the interwebs with people publishing not at all pre-written and archived pieces they certainly hadn't prepped months ago with just the date waiting to be plugged and reactions range the political gamut from fawning to frothing and everywhere in between but what surprised me about the whole thing was my own visceral reaction to the news i preferred her in 2008 over barry o because i thought she would make a really good president yet when her album dropped last weekend i was actually kind of pissed there was something about the inevitability and trust me you'll hear that word bandied about a lot that just tweaked my sense of what elections are supposed to be about it's basically that it's assumed that hillary is going to run and going to win the nomination and given the field of republican candidates and the structure of the electorate of 2016 she's probably going to win so why the hell are we even going to spend the next two years wasting billions of dollars Hillary estimates that she will raise and spend $2.5 billion, with a B, dollars. Not to mention our national attention for what is basically a foregone conclusion. If we've decided already, can we just skip to the end and then spend that money that she would be using on something useful like, I don't know, Jesus, I googled how to spend $2.5 billion? Don't do that. Just don't. I mean, the good things that you could do and the bad things, yeah, yeah, just just don't do it. So if you figure that the eventual Republican candidate will raise similar funds, $5 billion with a motherfucking B bucks, on a campaign which is going to come down to Hillary and probably Jeb Bush or Scott Walker. And Hillary is eminently qualified and capable, indisputably electable, and would make a hell of a president. There's no one else on the Democratic scene that's even close to her. It's just, just, shouldn't we at least look for someone? You know, just in case? Are we anointing candidates now? Heir apparents? Is this Westeros? I mean, shit. Shit, there's more competition for the Iron Throne than for the Democratic domination. Elections are supposed to be about choices. And while the Republicans have an embarrassment of riches in this department, and most of them are pretty embarrassing, Democrats have Hillary and... uh, Hillary and... I'm drawing a blank here. I mean, I know there was someone... Bernie Sanders. (laughs) I'm sorry, Bernie. I'm sorry. I love you. But you realize that Vermin Supreme has a better shot, and he wears a a boot on his head because at least he's not a socialist. Though to be fair, your odds are still better than Rand Paul's. 
And for God's sakes, Joe Biden hasn't even said anything, and he's a sitting vice president, a job that only exists to wait for the chair to cool off from the current occupant's ass so you could put yours in there. Uncle Joe, maybe he's just chilling, waiting till his moment's right, like that time he was trying to get that roadie gig with Motley Crue. Yeah, I was headed down to Petersburg, and I saw the vice president standing by the side of the road with a ratty-looking backpack and his thumb hanging out. When he got in, he seemed upset that there was nowhere to play his foreigner tapes. Then he pulled his Philadelphia Eagles cap down, put his boots up on the dashboard, and conked right off for a couple of hours. When he woke up, he told me to pull over because he said he had to drain the snake. Well, we were getting gas, and uh, he came out with a 24-pack of Coors Light and a bottle of Jack Daniels. He said it was uh, really time to get the party started. He then offered to make us the sickest apple pipe we'd ever seen. He kept asking if I had the cojones to make it with Cindy Crawford if she was ever lying there spread eagle waiting for me. He smelled pretty bad, like um, cigarettes and body odor. I dropped him off at a, a, a truck stop near Chester about two nights ago. Said he planned on sleeping there. He told me all a man needs to sleep is a bench to lie on and a cold one to nurse him to bed. I said it might be a little dangerous out there alone. He said he was carrying his butterfly knife and that he just got his green belt in Taekwondo. He was here last night and he kept buying everyone sitting at the bar mimosas. So I cut his tab off at about $400. But when I asked him to pay up, he said all he had was a pack of Marlboros. And then he was like, Uncle Joe can think of a couple ways to pay you. I turned around for one second and the son of a bitch was gone. To be honest, I thought it was kind of cute. I love Uncle Joe so much from The Onion. I honestly think that he should be Hillary's running mate just so the joke can keep on going. But that's probably not going to happen. And look, again, not anti-Hillary. I'm just reacting on some sort of deep emotional level to the sinking realization that American voters really don't have any say in who they're voting for. If Christmas ran like this, American children would rise in revolt. Okay, Ashton James, all right, Arissa King, this Christmas we're not doing the traditional letter to Santa, but we've chosen these gifts here because, frankly, they're perfectly acceptable toys, and really, they've put a lot of time and they deserve it. I know you wanted something from Frozen, but instead, here's your Wally. And Wally was great, but it's kind of 2008. Yeah, I know I'm being crazy. But one of the useful parts of a primary season is pushing candidates to take out positions on issues. This happened in 2008 when Clinton and Obama pushed each other into taking positions that they'd probably rather not. But also, if no one is pushing Hillary this time, then there's no reason that she's going to take any controversial positions. And Hillary's idea of controversial is about as radical as vanilla ice cream. Sorry if you want progressive liberal sprinkles on that ice cream. You folks are going to have to put that on there yourself. I want candidates. I want debates. I want someone to at least pretend they're interested in some of the progressive ideology that I and a lot of people want addressed. Telling me you're interested in the everyday American is fine. But what does it mean? Ask Hillary and see. She'll be like, Hillary, where, where are you going? Excuse me, I asked you a question. What? what, what? Oh, fine. There she goes. Any critical analysis of Clinton's policies has got to address some big issues. And I'm not talking Republican derping points about Benghazi or her using a prodigy mail account to conduct straight to State Department business. And I'm actually talking like a prodigy online service account, not even prodigy.net. Hillary's positions have always been more hawkish than Obama. They've been more more pro Wall Street, and the last time she was on Main Street, she was being chauffeured in an Escalade. Her connection to everyday American is as nebulous as Marco Rubio's entire idea of why he's running for president. But when I bring up these legitimate questions, I'm shouted down by walls of angry Democrats who either attack me for attacking her because, oh sure, when a woman comes along, she doesn't even get the chance, to which I reply with a list of qualified candidates who are women with policies that are more closely aligned to mine. Or I get, Jesus, man, do you want Jeb Bush picking four Supreme Court justices? Sometimes I actually get spittle on me via the internet, which is a pretty neat trick. I mean, I get it. We're talking the unbreakable hilly sea. 
She's the anointed one. When the time comes, I will dutifully carry water for her, or at least I'll say I will, or sit around doing nothing, because, frankly, I live in the bluest of blue states, and my vote has about as much meaning as yesterday's lottery ticket. But don't expect me to sit quietly for two years and $2.5 billion with a B dollars worth of adver- advertisements and not call out the things that I don't like. I'm just not going to blindly accept her as the be-all, end-all of the Democratic National Party. Now, all of this being said, though, there's no fucking way I'm letting Republicans anyways near those court nominations. Well, that's it for this week, Friday, April 17th, 2015. And what the hell were you thinking? Uh, music tonight from a band called Hypnostate. You can find more of their stuff on Jamendo.com. Our audio drops were brazenly stolen from the unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt and The Onion. You can check Kimmy on Netflix and you should definitely check it out. Uh, go to The Onion to read more about Uncle Joe for at least two more years. And uh, hey, come back next week when we ask Chris Christie. What the hell were you thinking? I mean, where even is he these days? I mean, transition. Damn it!